One of the things that becomes clear as you read through the, the New Testament is there was a lot of confusion around who Jesus Christ was. And, and what I mean by that is if you read through your Bible, uh, the ruling religious parties of the day, the Pharisees and scribes, uh, on more than one occasion accused him of having a demon or saying that he was demon possessed. And then there's a moment in the scriptures where his family approaches him because they think he's lost his mind. And then uh, he asks his disciples, what's the word on the street? Who do people say that I am? And, and they say, some say that you're Elijah. Others say that you're John the Baptist. So in essence, they're saying you're some sort of reincarnated ghost prophet. And then Jesus turns it on him and says, who do you say that I am? And Peter says, you're the Messiah, you're the Holy One of God. But I don't want to give Peter credit for that because just three or four verses later, Jesus rebukes him and says, get behind me, Satan. And so I don't think you get credit for naming Jesus as the Messiah if you're going to rebuke him two verses later and then get called Satan four verses later. And so really the only one who nails the person and work of Jesus in the New Testament are the demons, the, the demons are con they know exactly who Jesus Christ is. In fact, if you watch them, there's never any kind of dynamic debate between Jesus and a demon. Jesus doesn't try to cast them out and they're like, not today. And then there's this kind of fight that you would see on the movies, right? It just doesn't work that way. In fact, they almost always fall to the ground in the person that they're in and say, we know who you are. You're the Holy One of God. In fact, in one instance, they say, have you come to destroy us before the appointed time? So the only one that seems to get Jesus right in the New Testament are the demons. Now, let me tell you why that matters. If we begin to look at how quote unquote Christians behave and how they can treat other people and how they can behave in a way that's unchristian, I think there's a couple of ways to look at that. If there was misunderstanding in the person and work of Jesus Christ in the first century while he was walking on the earth, how much more is there confusion today around who Jesus is and what it means to be a Christian? Like I would bet if we could all kind of press pause on um, this, this DVD or this uh, webcast or however you're watching this, we could all load up in a van or a bus and we could head down to your mall and we just did a light survey on who Jesus was you're gonna see that some people think he's a good teacher, others that he's a great philosopher, others that he's the son of God, but we would be all over the map. What I've learned being in Dallas, Texas, is there's a lot of people who believe they're Christians who simply are not Christians. If you ask them why they're Christians, they'll say because they're Texans or because they go to church or um, because they're Americans or because uh, their parents were on and on and on. It'll go. It's a whole list of things that do not make you a Christian. And so one of the first reasons that quote uh, unquote Christians behave in a manner that's unchristian is they're simply not Christians at all. Please don't make the mistake of believing that just because a person goes to church, they're a believer in Jesus Christ. Churches are filled with people who either misunderstand who Jesus Christ is or who don't know him at all. All. And so the first reason why Christians might behave in a way that seems counter to the way Christians could li should live is because they're not. But there's a second reason also. Sometimes Christians behave in a way that's unchristian simply because they're immature believers in Christ. And so there has to be grace towards people who act in a way that's unchristian, who might be Christian, but are just immature. So if I think back on how I treated my parents and how I treated people when I was immature, so sometimes I'm just really embarrassed. There are stories I could tell you about things I shouted at my parents or ways that I handled a situation early on in my faith that are to this day shameful and embarrassing for me. In reality, I was a believer in Jesus Christ. I was just immature. I didn't know much about the Bible. And over the next few years, men and women of God who knew the Word of God graciously sat down with me and explained to me, the Bible says that men of God should behave like this, that they should handle situations like this. And as I grew in my understanding of the Scripture, I grew in what it meant to be obedient to God. And so Christians oftentimes will act in ways that are unchristian because they're not saved, but a lot of times they're acting that way because they're immature in their faith. And most 
15, 16, 17, 18 year olds are a bit immature in their faith. So let's be gracious and let's be honest about those inconsistencies and lovingly engage our brothers and sisters to live in such a way that honors Jesus Christ and helps us love one another in the way that the Bible would have us love one another.